Greetings, a hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends, and welcome to yet another installment of MNS Creativers. We want to consider a sermon titled The Best Sermon as we start the Easter holidays or the Easter weekend. I invite you to the book of Matthew. We want to begin at chapter 26 and we'll look at verse 63. This is what the Bible provides as follows. The high priest say to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. 64, you have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to you all, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Skip to chapter 24, verse 54. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he is the Son of God. Let us spend a moment together as the Lord blesses the reading of his word in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the realization and the confession, surely Jesus is the Son of God. As we go into this study, as we go into this holiday, may you help us to appreciate what happened. May it not only bring terror but conviction in our hearts to seek thee and follow you. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. As our custom is, we are still going to raise our usual five points. This is the first thing that I want us to note. As the high priest speaks to Jesus, this is the question he puts to him. If you are the Messiah, the Son of God, I charge you by the name of the living God. Do let us know who you are. This sounds like a very innocent statement until you go back to the book of Matthew chapter 4 and you consider verses 2 and 6. You're going to find that these very same words are used by the devil when he tempts Christ. He says, if you are the son of God, turn the stones into bread. If you are the son of God, do this, this and that. You need to be careful, my dear friend, especially if you are an office holder who is whispering in your ear. Little did the chief priest know that as he went on this agenda to do away with Jesus Christ, he was playing the tune and dancing to the pipe that the devil was playing for him. Some of us are office holders. As we come to these holidays, let us reflect. Who whispers in our ears? Are we doing any good or we're doing more damage than good where we are at? Because we have allowed the wrong voices to whisper into our ears. Be careful who whispers into your ears. And at point number two, notice this. After they have sat on this charade of a hearing that the, the Jerusalem Council holds um, at an earlier date, they had resolved at the direction of Caiaphas, the chief high priest, that, you know, it is better for us to have one man die than for us to lose the whole nation. And they resolved that Christ was going to be put to death. Now they go on through the motions of voting and they say, surely the man has to be put to death. But they do not have the ability. They do not have the power. They do not have the authority to take a life. They are a weak committee. But this very weak committee becomes so strong and forceful, forceful enough to twist Pilate's hand. They procure the death of Christ through the work of Pilate. And what am I saying to you this morning? Be careful of those who are too weak to do anything for themselves because they will force your hand like Pilate and you will kill for them. They may be weak to kill, but they are not weak to procure murder. They can afford to pay for it. They can afford to untwist it out of you. They can afford to get it out of you by hook or crook. And Pilate found himself with no option to save his position but to make sure that Christ was crucified. His efforts at offer the offering them Barnabas as an alternative did not work. His effort at declaring that he had found no fault in Christ 
did not work. Why? Because the Pharisees and the crowd were baying for blood. They were baying for blood. Barabbas was not going to be good enough. It had to be Jesus Christ. Point number three. Here's the other thing that I find very interesting. Christ, as he goes into the triumphal entry in the book of Luke chapter 19, it is recorded that the Pharisees and the chief priests told him, silence your disciples. They're making too much noise. And Christ says, if these were to be silent, immediately these stones will rise up and testify of who I am. The high priest have managed to secure the death of Christ and now they're leading him to the cross and eventually they have nailed him to the cross and raised him up on the cross at Golgotha, the place of the skull. As they are waiting for his death and demise, the priests have done their bidding. The apostles who had sung praises in Luke chapter 19 are nowhere to be seen. They have fallen silent. It is only John the beloved who continues to walk with Christ Peter has just rejected and denied Christ after the crow has crowed three times. And the other disciple is no more. It is Judas Iscariot. He has just died, taken his life and committed suicide. Now that the disciples have fallen silent and the words that continue to come are the words that have come from the mockers. They come from the high priest. They come from the thieves that are on either side and they mock Jesus Christ. There is no one to praise him. At that very moment, nature has to testify that Jesus is the Son of God. And how does nature do this? The Bible records in the New International Version that first of all, between 12 and 3 p.m., there was a darkness that covered the earth. Nature testified and says, I cannot look upon the life of my Savior being taken. I cannot be indifferent and it covers its face. Nature could not look upon it and remain indifferent. Secondly, at B, the temple curtain was torn without a hand, without a scissors, without a knife. It just rent into two pieces. Nature could not remain silent. It had to say something. Even the temple itself had to do the extraordinary and become part of the grieving process and become part of those that testify that indeed he's the son of God. And at C, the Bible says the earth shook. It shook before he died. It shook at the point of his resurrection. The earth responded and testified he is the son of God. And the number D, the rocks split. As they split, he says these rocks will open their mouths and testify. And indeed on that day, the rocks split. And at point number five, notice this other thing. When Dathan and Korah had challenged Moses, the earth opened up and swallowed them. But now that they have challenged the Savior, the earth opens up and excludes those who are holy. It spits them out. They come out. The earth will open up and swallow the unrighteous. But the earth opens up to let loose of those who are righteous. The earth testified. The crust of the earth that is hard and cold. Over the years, it had embottled and even kept them in there. It opened up and let go of them. Nature will testify he is the son of God. And nature would say so unequivocally and unapologetically. At point number four, notice something that the high priests have been saying unto him. They're saying he claims to be the son of God. He claims to be following God. Let God rescue him. Little did they know. Christ was on a rescue mission. He was not the object of rescue, but God was out to rescue humanity. And Paul testifies, in Christ, God was reconciling the earth and the world unto himself. As they nailed him to the cross, the object was not for him to be rescued, but for him to rescue the holy ones. As you look at verse 51, the Bible says, the bodies of the holy people who had died were raised to life. Such is the power of the cross. Such is the mission of Christ. It is to raise you and I to life with all this evidence. With all this evidence. Everybody else had seen it firsthand. But the Roman centurion looking at how nature responded. He was preached to. Christ was dying. And the Roman centurion has to say, surely, surely he is the son of God. 
What will it take for us to accept this? Some of us have been given undeniable evidence that Christ is the Son of God. Undeniable evidence that He lives. Undeniable evidence that He saves. Undeniable evidence that He redeems. But we continue to reject and deny that He is Christ. And deny that He is the Son of God. I want to talk to you this morning and say, let nature not outdo you. You can testify. You can go out and tell it to the world that he is the son of God. He is the son of God. What more evidence will you need, my friend? This is the same one that when no man could preach, nature took over and preached to the Roman centurion. He came to this realization, surely he is the son of God. I do not want you to use the past tense like the Roman centurion and say, he was the son of God. Jesus is still alive and he is able to save. I ready to commit your life unto him over this holiday. He is the son of God and he still wishes to rescue you and bring you to life. If this is your prayer, where you are, why don't you bow our heads and pray together. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you dear Lord for this sermon that has been preached by stones, preached by light, preached even by uh, the, the, the platonic movements. It has been preached even by the graves. Uh, dear Lord, when no verses were needed, when no songs could be sung, nature took over and preached a sermon. If we will not do our part of sharing the message, nature will preach again. How I pray, dear Lord, that before then, Somebody who is under the shadow of my voice, watching this very sermon, will come to the realization, surely he is the Messiah. He is the Savior. And offer their lives unto you. You can hear the plea from her heart. You can hear the appeal from his heart. May you reach out and touch such an one even now. In Jesus' name is our prayer. Amen. May the good Lord bless you, my dear friends. We shall meet again tomorrow morning on another edition where we look at the seal on the Sabbath day. See you then. Blessings and peace.